morning, Warwick. Good morning, Patricia. Hi, I'm Patricia Dean, cardiologist. I'm here with uh, interventional cardiologist Dr. Warwick Jeffy here. Uh, today we're going to talk about COVID-19, uh, the vaccine and effects on the heart. So Warwick, tell me about uh, the, firstly, about COVID-19 and the effects on the heart. Well, if you are unfortunate enough to, ca to catch COVID, a s very small proportion of patients can get um, uh, cardiac inflammation, particularly myocarditis and pericarditis, and that can be very nasty and can cause a lot of difficulty. And there have been people who have um, really died of cardiac complications um, from COVID, so it can be very serious, although it's um, pretty uncommon. Usually it's respiratory that, um, uh, that kills people with COVID. Right, more importantly, we actually want to know uh, what's the effects of the va vaccine on the heart? Is there any negative side effects? Well, uh, initially, uh, this wasn't even, uh, wasn't even considered or thought about, but about at the end of May, there was a cluster of cases reported where uh, uh, people were, were getting chest pain and evidence of myocarditis and pericarditis uh, uh, shortly after having the COVID vaccine. So usually it was occurring in you know, three to five days after the vaccine. And uh, although it's a rare sort of thing, it could cause a lot of concern and alarm. Based on the current information, what is the uh, incidence of uh, mild pericarditis after the vaccine? And what type of patients tend to get it? Okay, so if we think of um, what actually is causing this, it's likely to be hypersensitivity. That means you, um, you amount a huge immune response to the vaccine and uh, that causes problems with um, uh, organs being attacked. So the information mostly, uh, uh, most useful information comes out of Israel where five million people were vaccinated with the same uh, messenger RNA vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, and they found about 24 uh, people per million uh, had this uh, complication. And the characteristics of these people were this, they were tended to be younger people mostly men, mostly under the age of 30, but other studies have shown some up to 50 um, uh, 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 reporting this. And they tended to get present in quite a spectacular way. They, didn't, uh, they presented with chest pain, often had um, uh, uh, ECG abnormalities with Tbap abnormalities, and disturbingly their uh, troponin levels have, uh, can be uh, quite elevated. So that's really, um, that's how the patients present. They're generally younger males. Right. Does that mean a young bloke should not get the vaccine because of concern about myocarditis? Well, that's a good question. The first thing is to say, well, what's actually happened to these, uh, to these young people? Have they um, died of this condition? Have they got permanent disability from it? M the vast majority of them, their biomarkers have improved within a few days, their ECG changes have gone away, and their chest pain has settled, and most of them have been left with pretty normal-looking um, hearts on uh, MRI. But of course, those are short-term studies. So I think in the short term, even though this can occur, the risk to these younger people is pretty low. We haven't seen a lot of people who've succumbed from this, although there have been a few um, isolated cases reported. But what's the effect of it in the long term is sort of unknown. So now, the, so to answer your question, uh, should a young person, young male, have the COVID vaccine? Well, in areas where um, uh, COVID is prevalent and where there's a lot of it in the community, the risk of getting a complication from your heart from COVID is many, many, many times higher than the risk of getting a complication from the vaccine. So on balance, um, this observation or this finding of myocarditis in younger people, younger males, shouldn't stop uh, young, younger people having the vaccine. But of course, in a place where there is no COVID, uh, then that's a bit of a, more of a difficult situation. So for example, in New Zealand, you could say that um, there is not much COVID here, so you are taking a minute risk with having uh, the vaccine from getting this complication with, for um, no immediate benefit, but of course a benefit to society. So I don't think there's a simple answer to the question. I don't think this should stop people um, you know, having the vaccine in New Zealand who want to have it, but it's just something that we should be aware of um, as, as doctors uh, to look out for this complication and I don't think we should warn every person who's having the COVID vaccine that they could get this, except to say in general terms, if you're having the vaccine, if you feel unwell in any way after it, then report properly to your doctor. Mm. And just let's not forget the benefit of the COVID vaccine and the purpose of it is to prevent severe 
COVID infection which could lead to death. Yeah, exactly, mm. but the, 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 the counter argument to that is that the chance of that happening in the younger people is very, mu very much lower and they are the ones that are likely to get the side effect from the vaccine. But I think the American um, regulators, their strong message has been is that the fact that this um, myocarditis has been found and we know the incidence of it now shouldn't put people off having the vaccine Correct. Uh, in that country. Yeah. In New Zealand, I don't think it really should put younger people off having the vaccine, but I think that if a person um, is not very keen to have the vaccine and has got various objections and starts discussing with you, you must uh, you must fess up and say, well, yes, this can happen, but it's very rare and usually people do very well from it. And I think it's, in the end, having a vaccine or not is an individual decision. It's not something that doctors should be um, really um, absolutely forcing the patient to have. And this is definitely an area that we can look out for formal published data. Exactly. What we're looking forward to seeing is what is the long-term effect of the um, having myocarditis in a younger person. Is there, are there some long-term effects of it? And of course, None of us know, and it's interesting that um, there was a lot of um, editorials written in um, cardiology magazines um, after these results came out about myocarditis, and one group of cardiologists said, look, it's just nothing to worry about. The patient's all got better, don't worry about it, and therefore everyone should get the vaccine. The other group who are a bit more conservative said, well, hey, we better be a bit more careful about this because we don't know what's going to happen to the hearts of these people in, you know, in a year, two years, ten years down the track, and they're all young people. So really, um, it should be an informed decision as to whether or not a young, healthy person wants to have the um, COVID vaccine. The bottom line is the incidence, the chance of getting myocarditis is actually much higher if you get the COVID-19 disease compared to uh, the vaccine-related myocarditis. Yeah, and in actual fact, and, and I think what's going to happen in the world is that we won't be able to travel anywhere, we won't be able to go anywhere without, without the vaccine. So in the end, that's probably going to make young people get it um, anyway. The final thing I wanted to say is that if your patients with heart trouble ask you should they get the vaccine, the answer is a resounding yes, because yes, they have the most to benefit from it. There should be virtually no cardiac patient that um, you'd be thinking shouldn't be uh, getting the vaccine.